I guess the best way to start a meeting is uh, the bees are going to do what the bees are going to do. Y'all have a good night. <laughs> um, so Aaron asked me to speak about uh, about Swan. Let me ask you, is that good on the camera then? Yeah. I need to be about right here? Yeah, right because you've cut up too close here. Okay, thank y'all. Thank you. Not <laughs> here. Um, so I love to, to, to talk, da, da, da. I love to talk bees. Um, I love everything about bees. Give you a little background on us real quick. Um, so we started keeping, I started keeping bees in 2020. Uh, had a little bit of downtime during the summer. I think some people did. Um, and then I really got hooked in the bees and that winter I decided um, that I needed a new day job. Not, not, not like quit my day job, I needed another day job. So um, I ordered 50 packages over the winter and um, we came out of winter with a, after the packages took, so about two years ago now, um, we had 52 hives. Um, we lost a, a few over the winter, which is normal. So we grew and we split and we grew and we split. And uh, I encourage my all my girls to fail, like go fail at something, you know. And and uh, beekeeping is is not going to hold back in letting you fail. So um, Corey and I met. She's always had a hankering for bees, going back like ten years. Um, so she, she we we met. Uh, we met on Match.com, which is, well, you know, <laughs> hang on. Like I, don't it, like that. I don't like to share that. Part. When I was growing up, like, we, you can get on, you went and met people the old fashioned way, and now this is the way folks do it. And turns out, like, I was looking for a specific kind of person and found her. So, start off conversation, she says, you know, because, you know, on my profile picture, I had me holding a frame of bees. So she says, you know, are you a keeper? And I responded, I'd like to think so. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and turns out I am. I wish I had dollar birds on my face. So, <laughs> so um, uh, she come over for a date and she saw the hives and she said, you know, yeah, I'd like to see in a hive. And I was like, well, then let's get a suit on. Off to the bees we went. And um, so I'm ambitious. And so... <laughs> Uh, some call it ambitious, some call it crazy. Um, so we expanded those 52 up to 109 by August. And then I didn't understand that you have to feed bees. Like, I thought you just put them out there and they I mean, this is as rookie as you can get, okay? It was me. And um, so we lost 25 hives in August due to starvation. Nothing like a rookie season. So we went into winter with 87 and we came out with 77. That would have been a, about a year ago, you know, you, you, Valentine's Day a year ago. So, so we went from, uh, well, from 77 up to 307 last year. And then we come out of winter with 256. So we took about a 15% loss, which is very acceptable. And I did a lot of learning. I am YouTube certified. <laughs> um, for anybody, but but really, we're um, I, I love the knowledge about beekeeping and just twenty ways to do things. So um, this year, we're in the process of taking that up to about eight hundred, and um, that's where I that's that's the happy place where I can leave uh, leave my day job and make a full time living, and we'll see how much bigger I want to go and um, what that looks like. So we've, we've learned these big chunks of growing an operation fast. And you know, I didn't know this, but um, you know, last year we started 430 nukes and we ended up with 231 takes, 50%, 55%. It's, it's pretty terrible um, in the world of beekeeping. You don't know what you don't know. Now I know. Here's how to do better. Um, but if you don't, ha you know, I didn't go work for somebody. Like I'm learning it on the on the fly. So um, let me ask, let me ask this: uh, Who in the crowd has ten hives or more? Got one. Everybody has ten hives. That helps me know my audience is to. I'm gonna give you information off the off the cuff, but like I want to think about how I can help you. So does anybody have a goal of growing to ten hives? Let's ask that. 
Or one. Okay, two. Uh, and three. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to kind of target that. Let's assume most of you have maybe two to five. And we're going to talk about maybe how to get to ten and why I think you should do ten. And most people look at me like I'm crazy, but like if you can keep two, you can keep ten. I promise. So. Tell uh, my kids. That's right. If you try, right. Like, once you, you know, once you get so many, you got to be there anyways. You might as well go through, you know. So. Um, I second that. Uh, I, I had fives. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> well, uh, is anybody? Let's start with Swarm. Why don't we just start with Swarm? So we'll dive in there. Um, does anybody know how you can tell that your hive has swarmed? Like, you arriving out to the bees and... There's a whole lot less. a whole lot less. <laughs> Corey says, they're right there in the tree. <laughs> we're, we're, they're up there, right? I mean, that's that's we've all been there. Um, it I see them in the tree, but I don't know where they came from. I just know that they're ours and they're there. So we got to tune in. Yeah, uh, we, we pretty much only catch our bees. Um, I got... Swarms is a great way to expand. Swarms is a dangerous territory. Um, you don't know what blessings or curses you're getting. That stand, and it, it, early on, I didn't understand that. And now I can't tell you that saying enough. Um, in my opinion, swarms are just a nightmare. So I have a place we just put swarms. Um, because I don't want them anywhere near my hives. It's that bad. You don't know what diseases they're carrying, how much mite load they've got. Um, so let me ask you another question. There's two real divisive topics in beekeeping. Uh, one is, uh, do you treat or not treat for varroa? So the easiest way to ask is, is anybody here not treating? Okay, that answers that then. Good, everybody's treating. Um, I am going to spend the rest of my lifetime trying to breed a better bee. Um, I'm going to be one of the first five commercial apiaries um, in the North American continent this year to do trial testing for breeding a Varroa specific hygienic bee. And we're going to try and lead, be on the cutting edge of this. And that's, that's like a whole another night's top, uh, a talk, but it really dives into the biology and, and kind of everybody up to now for 30 years has failed. I'm probably gonna fail. It's okay. Go fail. Like that's you know, but but you gotta try. Um, people can't do it without bees. I don't think I have to tell this crowd this. So the second divisive issue is: Does anybody not feed their bees sugar, or is everybody on board with feeding? These are real. These, believe it or not, you know, I've spoke at a number of different county forums. Like this is a divisive topics. Some people say we should not treat and we should let the strong survive and let, let's die die. And I disagree. And then some people say, well, uh, feeding straight sucrose is bad for X, Y, and Z. It lacks amino acids. It lacks a lot of the good stuff. Yes, I agree with that. But if you need to put weight on fast or we need to uh, use it as a management tool, feeding's what I do. So um, that kind of covers all that. So let's uh, back to back to swarming. Um, so swarm control to me is really easy and I'm gonna start with this if you have a goal or if you will have a goal to get to 10 hives you can eliminate the majority of your problems that you incur when you only have two or three meaning if you've got one weak hive you can kill that queen and you can bring in four frames of brood you know so pull one frame of brood out of each of the four give it five frames and let them make a cell and they will um, make a new queen from stock out of your four strongest hives. As time goes on and you work that out, you end up with strong hives across the board because it's genetics. You can control the, the female side of the genetics there. The big question is the drones, what's in your area. Um, so uh, we, we created a breeding program, kind of like a pentagon. It's about two miles across. And at the five corners of that pentagon, we've got 20 hives. Right in the middle, we've got 20 hives. So that no matter which way those virgin queens go, they run into a lot of our drone stocks. So we control the, the drones and the queens. Uh, and, but, but on small scale, you can get together in your bee club and say, oh, you live near me, and you live near me. 
well, I got a couple extra hives. Maybe we can go over here and talk to these folks, ask them if we can put three hives in their yard. And then all of a sudden you create a, li a little breeding program amongst yourselves. Um, th that's really easy to do. Well, if you think about during swarm season, the main reason that people's bees swarm is because they're not in them enough, a lack of uh, just overall experience. And what we do, I'm gonna pretend that we've got 10 hives up here. When I leave those 10 hives, they all need to be at the same stage. So let's talk about the year so far. We started feeding February 6th this year. We come back on February the 20th. So that's um, you know two weeks later. And we're gonna feed them again and we're gonna balance the brood to uh, five frames of brood in all the colonies. I've run 10 frame singles at that point. And then we're gonna come back two weeks later, which is March the 5th, and because I'm on two week cycles on everything. So come back March the 5th and those singles, I mean, one frame of brood is two frames of bees. So those five frames of brood are now a full box. And so March, March the 5th, we wanna give them a second box, give them two more weeks and let them start working up. There's two tricks to keep your bees from swarming, and that is giving them space and taking an appropriate amount, or another way of saying that is setting them back. Setting bees back is good. So for us, that is March 6th through 8th. To give you an idea, we had 10 frame double deeps at that point around March the 8th. I run a two frame feeder with eight frames up top and we've got 10 frames down. So we got 18 total frames and I'm coming back around March the 8th and we're seeing anywhere from 11 to 14 frames of brood. If we give it another two weeks, that's 28 frames of bees. They're out of space. The hotel's packed. They're going to end up in the trees. It's just what bees do. Bees, bees make more bees and bees make honey. So the way we do that is we go in and we, we split real aggressively. And in Burlington, our target date for our nectar flow is April 20th. It doesn't matter if we're having an early spring. It doesn't matter if we're having a late spring. All the pre-planning went into April 20th. So on March the 8th, that is five weeks, five weeks time. Or another way to say that, that's two cycles of bees. So on March the 8th, I take these colonies, let's say it's got 11 frames of brood, we take it back to four frames of brood. We make a lot of weak splits. The reason we make a lot of weak splits is not all of them are gonna get successfully mated. And so we come back a month later, which is this week, and we're going through those splits where, where uh, we had put a cell in, and then you can, you can do a walkaway split, or you can put a cell in either one, and now we're checking up on who was successfully mated, who's not. If they weren't successfully mated, we just recombine that with, with one of the parent hives, and they'll sort it out. Um, because they don't have a queen. They're dying for a queen. So you introduce them to a hive full of the queen, they're happy. They'll all be friends by the end They'll all be friends by the end of the day. Um, so the, the first way we can <laughs> avoid swarms is no overcrowding. Yeah. Did you have, with that strategy, did you have much trouble this year because of the up and down of weather and, and all that with frames, with uh, splits being too small to stay warm? No, and I want to get into that in just a minute. Okay. So, we make a mint prior to April 1st. You have to think about what your nighttime lows are. She so really should be making like, at the weakest, three frame splits and a shake of bees. Weak splits for us comes the second week of May because our nighttime lows are in the 70s. Daytime highs are approaching 90. So those small two frame splits, you can get away with it because the nighttime low is, is the effect. So as we get towards summer, we're watching nighttime lows. And was, of course, in the fall, you watch nighttime lows going down. But um, I'm ready for, for demonstration purposes. Um, Get a box here. Right. 
it's uh, um, we go like this. Uh, I like all my hives. I'm gonna go like this. Every one of my hives on March 26th had this appearance to it. And what this means is these are your brood frames. We got a four and a three. We've got pollen and honey on the outsides. And then we the, I call these blanks. It's just an undrawn foundation. And every single time in the spring that I'm in a colony, I interrupt the brood nest with a blank. And we leave it together like that. What this does is it gives the bees a feeling of unaccomplishment. There is something not right here. There is too much room. And if you do this every two weeks through the spring, you're constantly getting an additional frame drawn out. Because for us, you know, we don't have a lot of drawn comb. It's not like we've been doing this for years. We've so, got a lot of bees and not a lot of drawn comb. Yeah, and so we're always looking at how do I, you know, because drawn comb's your gold. So we're always looking, how do we get them to draw it out? Well, every time I'm here, I want to interrupt their brood nest. You can, for example. Do you want to mark them with this highlighter? Nah, it'd be okay. Usually these are marked with Yeah, I forgot tape. my tape, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so what you cannot do, I'm just for example sake, what you can't do is a brood nest like this. You can't have a single brood frame off by itself or they'll abandon it. It's something within the hive. They don't like that. A minimum of two, two frames of brood. So when you introduce that blank frame in this position, you need at least four frames of brood. As the colony gets bigger and expands, constantly interrupting them in, within the brood nest, it gives them something to work on. They feel like they've got lots of room still and they don't swarm. So far out of, uh, we're back up around 300 right now and I've had 11 swarms so far. So we're less than 5% just by doing this method. When you notice that the bees have packed out, they're single or it's getting pretty full, then it's time to add that second box on top. Um, and as they expand into that, at some point you need to pull them back or they're going to go ahead and swarm. So not everybody, you can do a number of things. Um, you can buy a mated queen, you can do a walk away split, but what I, I'm gonna set this back up right for a second. What I prefer to do, if I was in your shoes, here's how I'd do it. I would find the queen and I would take three frames of brood and within the same apiary, the same yard, I, I like to leave about four feet, so like this. I would take, if this is your parent hive, I would take three frames of brood in the queen I put her here. By the end of the day, all the foragers are going to come home and they're going to realize, oh no, queen's gone. And they go into making cells. And I would come back one week later. And if this was a 10 frame double deep right here, so. Just a moment. So if this is our 10 frame double deep. We come back a week later, you're gonna probably find 10 cells. The bees know which cells to make the best queens and they know they're, they're missing. You can take a pocket knife, an X-Acto blade, whatever, and you can cut the, each of those individual cells. You can cut them off the plastic. Just be real gentle. And uh, flip them upside down. Yep, yeah, don't flip them upside down, jostle them, this and that. Just, just cut them out. And now you have all the cells you like. So, I mean, if you've got, you know, we, we run, like I said, 18 frames in this configuration. It's an eight over 10 and we have the end frame feeders. I'll leave the four frames of brood for the parent colony. I already took three over here. So that's seven and anything above seven. So if we've got, um, if we've got five more frames of brood, we're going to make a two and a three frame split, take a cell with it. And now you've busted this colony back down to a single with five weeks to go. So, you know, that was,
for us around March the 8th. And then during that time, they're going to rebuild this single. And now March 26th, we put the second box back on top. I checked them yesterday, and most of them have the center three frames drawn out. And our goal is that we've set it back so that from like right now, nine more days till our nectar flow starts historically, we want our bees to peak in population right around May 1st. And what that's going to do is as soon as the nectar flow hits, the swarm tendency goes away. And we have managed our colony for swarms. We've got the queen over here in this nuke. We've got two new nukes that we started over here. Maybe one failed and one didn't. If we got the fail, we'll just recombine it. And just like that, you turned your one overwintered single into about four new hives. Or um, if you had two, you turn that into seven or eight. And so the reason I advocate for more hives is if you've, if you've always got that one weakling or if you've got some that die over winter, you've got your own local stock to refresh with next spring. Um, 